guys, where you for Angela Yee? I'm Angela Yee on a Wealth Wednesday with my Wealth Wednesday partner, Stacey Tisdale. And I'm Stacey Tisdale, about to start what I know is going to be my favorite Wealth Wednesdays <laughs> yet, because we have <laughs> Pinky Cole Hayes. Because uh, <laughs> I just got married. Pinky, Pinky Cole, Cole Hayes. Hayes. Pinky Cole Hayes. Are we keeping the Cole too? Is it yeah, we keeping the Cole. Okay. It's hyphenated. Okay. My husband understands. <laughs> Yeah, you've been picky cold a long time. Yeah. I've been picky. I'm picky cold depending on what room I'm in. Okay, they yeah. mess it up all the time. But I'm I'm pinky cold haze. Um, I'm excited to be here. With Are the y'all. kids' names hyphenated also? No, no, no. They're okay, haze. they just all haze. All right. Okay. Yes. Well, first of all, congratulations to you because you are in town opening location number 14 for Slutty Vegan. Yes. Um, You know, it's funny. This morning when I was coming here, I'm like, damn, 14 locations and I didn't lose my mind yet. Like Mm -hmm. I done went through so many changes and here I am. And I'm just so grateful that I've had the opportunity to build a brand such as Slutty Vegan that is really touching people everywhere. Like now this business is a household name and I can't believe I'm the person that created that. Yeah. So quickly. So quickly. And, it hasn't and, even been six years. And in spite of people feeling like, oh, their name's Slutty Vegan. or I, I was um, on a panel yesterday, and mm-hmm. it was so funny because we were just talking about, like, different things that we have. And I was like, I'm just excited that, like, my coffee is the exclusive partner for Slutty mm-hmm. Vegan Breakfast. And for me to be in a room with all these, like, super corporate people and to be able to say Slutty Vegan <laughs> and, and everybody <laughs> nodding their head like, yes, yeah, Slutty Isn't Vegan. Isn't that awesome? It's a it, great feeling. It, it yeah. is a great feeling. And I think what the brand has been able to do is show people that you can re-engineer words, Mm -hmm. right? Like, slutty doesn't mean provocative. It don't necessarily mean racy. The concept don't have nothing to do with sex. Mm -hmm. It really is a way to draw people in to have the conversation about veganism. And we've been doing that for almost six years, and it's been working. You've helped people's wealth. You've helped people's health. You've been their role models, and you're giving back and you also yeah. now are doing these incredible educational projects and different things in American Sesh yes um, American Sesh is the bomb you will really be good for American Sesh I'm I on t- tell it yeah. Edge you gotta come I um, know but American Sesh really is an opportunity to bring celebrities creatives creative executives together um, in the name of ideation mm-hmm. right so like I don't care how much money you got I don't care how much followers you got it don't matter how many people know you all that matters is this, right. right? So if we can come with collective collaboration on big ideas, then it's a win for everybody. So we put these people at the table in front of an audience of 400 people, and we just build. And I can't tell you everything that happens in the room <laughs> because the marketing is no marketing. So, right. like, you come, no phones, no cameras. You just really come with a pen and pad, and everybody, like, locks in and builds billion-dollar ideas. And Pinky will be on on social media like, here's an idea, go. Here's yes. an idea, take <laughs> this go like yes. yeah because you do and i think even for you you know where you are right now with study vegan and also with bar vegan congratulations on um, bar vegan coming to baltimore where you're from yeah that. Bar Vegan coming to Baltimore, Slutty Vegan coming to Baltimore, and then even uh, Slutty Vegan is going to Hartsville Jackson International Airport. Oh, oh my unbelievable. God. This year, so I'm excited what about that. What a year. But, What's been, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, but to even when you first came up with this idea, you had no idea that it was going to happen the way that it has for you. That's no. what I was going to say differently, the two. <laughs> I, I still don't know what I'm doing though. You know, the, the, that's false. You listen, do. no, I don't. Right. So, and I think that <laughs> for real, in real life, um, I think that every entrepreneur can agree with that. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're doing it right, that means that you don't know what you're doing because you're still learning, still trying to get better. Um, and, and I say that obviously loosely because I'm also a work in progress. I ain't never run no multi million dollar company before, right? Let alone two. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, like, I get to learn every single day, and the information that I get to learn, I get to translate it and share it with other people who are walking in my footsteps trying to do the same thing if not more than I'm doing yeah how did you make peace with that feeling of feeling like you don't know what you're doing um I ain't at peace with it (laughs) 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 to be honest I feel like the moment that I get comfortable um then 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 I ain't doing enough right and Mm -hmm. and getting comfortable is a cancer in Mm -hmm. business and definitely and, and and I literally have had the biggest lesson even just recently You know, I had three kids back to back. I had a baby in 21. I had a baby in 22. I had a baby in 23. That's all that raw veganism. (laughs) All that raw. (laughs) It's my husband's fault. Um, So as a result of that, um, 
I kind of like took my hands off my business for a little bit, mm-hmm. right? And I trust I trusted people to run the business, which they did. But what I learned in business is that you always got to keep your hands on the wheel. So I don't know who needs to hear this. So when I talk about like learning and still don't know what I'm doing, like every day is a new challenge for me to learn something new about my business. Um, and I like it that way because I get to fall back in love with the business, which is a big thing for me. I've always said that if I would have known all of the challenges I would have had, maybe I wouldn't have did it. You know, because if you know what's ahead and how difficult it'll be and you have to try to plan for that, you might feel like it's impossible. And sometimes it's better to just... It loosely know what you want to do and what you want to happen. It's never going to happen the way that you plan. Yeah. And then you have to figure it out as you go along. Pivoting. Yeah, you know, it's what's interesting is... And, and shout out to all the people who like get up and go to work every day and clock in, right? Mm-hmm. Like entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Don't let social media fool you. There are some people that were born on this earth to be able to be a support to other people. And that may not necessarily mean a LLC because even times when you're an entrepreneur, sometimes you got to answer the people too. Yeah. And people don't really talk about that part. But growing up, I knew that I wanted to create something for myself where I can have a level of financial freedom and flexibility to do what it is that I want to do with asking for permission and I watched my mother work at the same company for 37 years and counting because mm-hmm. she's still at the same place and while she loves where she works I'm like that ain't my destiny right you know my destiny is to be able to create that level of flexibility so my children can see that kind of independence and I, I pray that more people see entrepreneurs and want to be entrepreneurs for that very reason you always I heard you say that you always envisioned slutty vegan as a billion dollar brand and that that was important you thinking of it that way was really important to it. success. What did you mean by that? Slutty Vegan is a billion dollar brand. Um, the money just ain't in the bank right now. But, <laughs> but It's but on the way. It's on it's the way. way. <laughs> um, but the reason why I say that, I'll tell you a story. Um, so when I was a kid, I can remember watching Golden Girls, uh, Days of Our Lives, um, and all of the shows. That was my day. Kid, yeah. Right? <laughs> that, I felt like that was my day, too. Yeah. Um, and when I was a kid, I'm like, when I grow up, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be a star. And, like, everybody around me would be like, Pinky is crazy. Pinky just dreams so big. They, they But so they didn't know what to expect because you got this little girl saying all of these big dreams. And when I got older, I made my first million when I was 29 years old going into 30 right so everything that I said that I wanted to do as a kid it realized itself Mm -hmm. so what I realized is and you know people say this all the time but it's really true the tongue has so much power absolutely okay what it is that you think about what it is that you say will come to pass good bad or different so I always make sure that I put optimistic thoughts in my mind in my spirit making sure that I am claiming the things that I want if I say I'm gonna be a star I'm gonna be a star I'm gonna be a star one day Pinky Cole Hayes is going to be a star right if I say I'm going to be a billionaire every single day of the week one day it is going to manifest itself and that billion dollars is going to be in the bank Preach we were just talking about that journaling and those questions Mm -hmm. and rewriting your mind and everything what was the most surprising part to you of of, of all of your success getting sued (laughs) my attorney told me because i it was shocking to me the first time i had like a lawsuit i was like what i didn't even but my attorney was like angela the more that you do the more lawsuits he was like i get sued like every day you know he was like the more that you do the more lawsuits that are gonna come Mm -hmm. and you always have to think about employees and the unpredictability of what a person might do or it could be something that you didn't necessarily do, but they you're responsible for something that mm. happened. It's really, really difficult because yeah. then the narrative gets out there. And when you're the face of your brand, mm-hmm. it matters so much. It, it matters because even if it's not you directly responsible, right. you're going to catch you're the accountable. heat. So that is also, and li- listen to me, everybody who's listening to this program. When you are an entrepreneur, you're going to take the highs and the lows. Mm-hmm. If, if things are looking bad, you're responsible. If things are looking up, you're also responsible for for it, right <laughs> and I've gotten to the place where I didn't got sued a couple of times right and I care more about my name than money at the end of the day if you take all the money from me as long as my name is clean and I got a clean bill of health I'll go get some more money you just right. reminded me of that scene in <laughs> Tina Turner just give me my name for real that's yeah. and, and it's so important <laughs> mm-hmm. people don't realize the power of your name absolutely okay like which is why people have meanings to their name and there's so much power in my name that 
at the end of the day, I'm protective of that. Mm-hmm. So when I started getting sued in the beginning, I used to be frustrated. I'm like, this ain't even my fault. I remember the <laughs> first time they told you your lawyer was like, don't he say He told anything. me not to say that. And he I'm was like, like no. no. <laughs> yes. I went online. I went like, ah, no, you had, I'm you had defending myself. that had gotten canceled. I remember the that Today too. Today show, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was really hard for me. But let me tell you how God is so good, y'all. Because sometimes you got to get tested before the big, big, big blessings yes. mm-hmm. start to come. I needed that test early on before or the billion came, right? Yep. Because then it helped me to understand how to navigate it so that when it comes and then I get into the same situation or something similar, I know how to deal with it right. and it won't be as stressful. So now I'm like, every time, and it's not every time because I don't get sued all the time, <laughs> but but I always laughed. I'm like, oh, I just went up another notch. I'm right. elevating somebody trying to sue me again. And that just tells me that I got something really special. But on the flip side, I'm continuing to make sure that we operate in best practices in my business mm-hmm. so that this is not always a thing. It's a way to protect yourself too to know what you need to protect yourself against yes absolutely you know? let and me ask you something you got several books a great cookbook i know oprah daily did some of the recipes mm-hmm. and angela was telling me about some of the uh, recipes but you also have get the f out your own way and i hope you fail mm-hmm. what are you trying to tell us i hope that you find the aspiration in the losses right and, and that's what failing really is, finding aspiration in Love losses. that. Love that. Right? Um, what, I, what I realized about life is that life is going to life. Like, shit is going to happen. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like, and whether it's something big or small, we all go through things, right? And even though we mask it by being on social media and acting like everything is good, sometimes it ain't always good. Right. But what do you do with the thing that's not always good? You have to reprogram your mindset and shift it to a place where you look at the upside and negative situations. So, for example, I had a restaurant in Harlem, caught on fire, grease fire, went flat broke, um, car got repo, got kicked out of my apartment. At the moment, I fell into a depression. Mm -hmm. And you know, like, I never felt depression before. I didn't know what I was feeling. But that was a hard time for me because historically, everything that I touched turned to gold, except Mm -hmm. for this time, right? So I didn't know how to navigate and handle it. But I needed that to happen because guess what that did for me? When I created Slutty Vegan, I knew how to make sure that I paid my taxes and all my bills on time. Mm -hmm. I made sure that I got fire insurance. Because if if you don't have fire insurance, if you have a fire, you don't get the money. So I made sure that I had those things. And I also, it gave me the opportunity to have that level of experience. Money can't buy that. Harvard can't give you that. Clark Atlanta don't give you that. No institution gives you that. That is a real on-the-job training Mm -hmm. that I got. So to some people, it may have looked like failure. But to me... It was a lesson that I was able to learn. And that is what you learn in the book. It really is a practical guide for people who are just dealing with life. But it's all about how you restructure your mindset and and approach when negative things happen. And that's how I look at things. I had to realize that a lot of losses, because no matter what, financially, we are going to take a ton of losses as you're trying Mm -hmm. to do things and figure Mm -hmm. things out. I always look at it now like this is like paying for education. You go to college and you pay for this uh, education. This is the most hands-on education that Mm -hmm. you'll have and you're investing in yourself. You know, we pray that it works, Mm -hmm. but if it doesn't, this was just part of you paying for this. And the process. Absolutely. And I did, and I said this off the air, but we got to say on the air, congratulations to Derek, to your husband also, because he's been killing it too with Big Dave's Mm Cheesesteaks with all of the uh, franchises that he's been I'm able just to, to open. I'm to be like him when I grow up. How many does he, <laughs> how many does he have now? Um, almost thirty. Okay. In total with wow. franchises. Jeez. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, we live in a hospitality household. Yes, you do. Right? So to, to live with somebody who is doing the same, the same exact thing. thing and we get to learn from each other. Like, he's franchising now and I got my third eye open. I'm like, mm, maybe I should franchise. Like, mm-hmm. I like how this is going. But we get to really um, share our experiences with each other about business. So I ain't got to pick up the phone and call somebody outside of the circle. Like, I can share my, like, most vulnerable secrets with him in the business and he'll understand them because not times out of 10 he's going to do the same thing yep. I saw you guys at the NAACP um, Image Awards mm-hmm. together but mm-hmm. it's so funny it'll be like Pinky Cole and her husband and I'm like uh, do y'all know this is Derek <laughs> Hayes who you know you, I, you know it's funny because we talk about that and like I, I want to say this on the record it bothers me when I see that and it bothers me because before I met Derek he had his own thing he had his own business he had a multi-million dollar company mm-hmm. right and that was what attracted me to him because he was like that's my he had it right going there. on he had it going on and he has it going on But I think what happens in our society, and this is a sad reality, that black men, 
do not get the same opportunities as black women. And it's just the truth. And it doesn't get looked at the same when they achieve success. It it does not get looked at the same because Derek is literally doing the same thing that I'm doing. Right. Right. Um, And he got a mouthpiece like me. Right. (laughs) Like he has a functioning business like me. Um, And I'm just imploring more outlets. Right. to, To start paying more attention to black men. Like shout out to Derek and to the Earn Your Leisure guys. Like there's a lot of black men and David Shands and all of the mm-hmm. black men that are moving and shaking in different industries, I feel like they don't get enough credit. And, I, and I'm publicly giving you your flowers, and I pray that the world does it too. Yeah, that's why I wanted Derek. to make sure we acknowledge yeah. Derek. Because I've known you guys both for mm-hmm. quite some time now. Mm-hmm. And so I want to make sure everybody's aware. Because when I saw that, I'm like, y'all know that is like yes, the like... owner of Big Dave's Cheesesteaks <laughs> also. It, it's not just... Yeah. You know, you guys are a power couple. Yeah. This is officially Derek. I know you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on Wealth Wednesdays. The gauntlet is thrown. Derek will yes. definitely be on Wealth Wednesdays, and we appreciate that shout out. Yes. It sounded like a lot of the lessons that you learned had to do with like the foundation of your business. Like you're talking about, I learned I have to get my insurance in order. I mm-hmm. learned that. Talk to entrepreneurs about how important that is. First of all, business is hard. So if anybody tells you that it's easy to be an entrepreneur, they lie. Um, it is very difficult, and some days you want to throw in the towel. A lot of days are good, but then some days you feel defeated. And as confident as I am, there are days where I feel like I, I lost the mustard. Right. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Um, but before anything else, your mindset got to be consistent, and you got to be focused on what your end goal is. And the end goal can't be money, right? What is your end goal? Like, why are you doing this? Why, why do you wake up every day? Like, having that vision um, to be able to keep going every day before anything else. Um, outside of that, in business, I've learned a lot, right? I've learned from my mistakes. And I feel like learning from mistakes, like we said before, is the best form of experience because I know what it means to bring the right talent because I had to go through a lot of bad talent in my company. Right. I I know what it is to pay attention to the money, because at the Mm -hmm. end of the day, if you ain't paying attention to the money in your business, it don't matter if you got a brand that everybody's talking about. If under the hood is a lemon, then that your your, Mm -hmm. your brand, your business don't mean nothing. Right. But I had to go through certain things from, like I said, from getting sued to um, having to one of my stores. I closed one of my stores because I put it in the wrong location. You Mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? Like and those are the things that I like to be transparent about in business because people will only tell you about the good thing but over the four the the almost six years that I've been in business I've learned and I've gotten stronger and I only continue to get better um the team I have right now is the best team that I've ever had on Sweaty Vegan um and and I and I couldn't have asked for a better team but I had to go through a lot of bad apples to get there and when I say bad they're not bad people right it was just not the t- fit. it wasn't the right fit right? It, it just wasn't the right fit and you have to understand in business when you don't have the right fit, right? I know. It's, and it's, diff- <laughs> it, it's, I mean, it's very, it's it's very, very difficult. We tend to feel like, okay, and I know I've done this to hire people that are family Your friends, members, are close to family, you. Because yep. you're like, who else are you going to trust? Yeah, exactly. A complete st- and sometimes that does not. You know why? Because there's a word called entitlement mm-hmm. that, that interferes with the professional relationship that you have with your loved ones. So what I've learned in business overall is you have to... Hire slow and fire fast. Right. Yeah. Right. You have to. Right. You have to be mindful of the people that you are bringing in your organization. They got to have the same ethos, the same mindset, the same spirit. If you ain't excited and turned up like me, then we can't work together because mm-hmm. then I'm going to be looking stupid in front of you because you're just going to be chill all the time. <laughs> and I'm going to be lit and, and turned sometimes up. Sometimes it starts out that way <laughs> and then things change. Yeah, it, it and, also and changes. It's, hard, too. When you feel it's like, hard when you have that yes. personal relationship and you know you're supporting. And then people they get and... very offended if you have to like switch off from being friends to yeah. being a boss. Yeah. So, so like, I like. You think I work for you? Yeah. You kind of do. You I write do. Check, yeah. you know? so, <laughs> so I have to limit those kind of relationships, mm-hmm. sadly enough, because too many of those relationships become a distraction to being able to get to the end goal. Instead, what I've been doing is finding opportunities for the people that I love around me to be able to win. Um, and it might not be in my organization or it might be them as a contractor where you don't necessarily answer to me. I hold you and your business accountable. Right. So, so there's creative ways to do it. But definitely a lot of lessons I've learned over the years in business. Is that why you say being good to your employees? 
is like I was reading that you were saying that's like the the most important thing. Yeah, more now than ever. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know why? Yeah. Because everybody is an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. You know, since COVID, it's so easy to be an entrepreneur. You TikTok, you can mm-hmm. be a millionaire on TikTok, right? So like people don't have to come and work in the restaurant industry. Mm-hmm. The reality of it is is the restaurant industry compared to other industries, the pay is not as good as a lot of industries, mm-hmm. right? So I make sure to um, pay my employees in a way where they can have a sustainable way of living. That's number one. Um, incentivizing them, yep. giving them Benefits. opportunities. Benefits. Yes. Like if you work 40 hours at Slutty Vegan in the restaurant space, you are going to get benefits. That really doesn't happen in, in the restaurant industry. And just providing them the opportunity to move up. I'm not yeah. the I'm not the CEO that like you got to work here for a year before you get promoted. If you here for three months and you run the circles around everybody else, you got the job. And you I understand always what I'm tell saying? people too, if there's ideas that you have, I'm always open to hearing, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, you know, other things that you feel like could be beneficial to the business. Absolutely. People who are creative, who can do great content, you know, no, that is so necessary. That's a hard thing to hire for, too. It very hard. That's my hardest thing. Yeah. Right? I'm hiring for that right now. So if that is you, call me. Send me a DM. To make content. To make content. Everybody, everybody me. thinks that they're great content creators. <laughs> but they're not. And they're not. They're not. And the reality of it is, yeah. is you know, I'm an older millennial, right? So, like, <laughs> TikTok is not my ministry. Not right? Either. It's not. So we are the Instagram era, mm-hmm. right? And because I'm not versed in TikTok, it's really difficult for me to be competitive in that space. And I, my... I just don't have a bandwidth to like sit and learn it. So I'm looking for somebody who really can come and just own my TikTok and just get, give more creative ideas. Like, you know, we have the marketing down pack, but like, if you want to be the best, you got to walk like the best, talk like the best, act like the best, look like the best. And I want to be the best. So I need to find the best. So that was a PSA for anybody listening. That's, to this. Yeah, that is so important. Cause <laughs> like, I know you have a background in production. I do. My background's in television production. Mm-hmm. So you think producing content, producing content mm-hmm. and really had to learn a social, social Social media, totally different animal. Definitely, mm-hmm. this background will help you, and th- you know these types of things, long form, mm-hmm. really finding that right person. Absolutely. And how important is that to branding? And really finding the right people. Because that for is your, your thing too, branding. like marketing and branding. It is. It, it's not the food. The food is good. People are going. The food's to come. very good. Thank you. The food mm-hmm. is good. They're going to come, but they're not coming for the food, right? They're coming to see what the hype is about, right? And that's how they learn about the hype. When you walk in and they call you like, chicken head. Yes, I'm like, like oh, whoa. well, <laughs> the the reason why they learn about the hype is by way of the marketing and branding and social media, right? So like the face front of it all has to be inviting. Mm-hmm. It has to be a space where people are like, oh damn, I gotta come there. Like I gotta see what the hype is all about. Mm-hmm. But it requires the people who are quick on their feet, super creative. Like I love having creative geniuses around me because they're going to come up with the ideas that are different from what everybody else is doing, and then it'll continue to drive traffic through the business. More people will come and we'll be able to continue to grow the brand and make it a household name like it already is you know what i want to talk about too expanding the way that you have because like we know this is your 14th location (laughs) that's opening and like you said one of them you had to close because you realized the location was not it for Mm -hmm. you so talk to me about how difficult that is because sometimes we have this idea in our head we do something we spend money we invest in it Mm -hmm. how did you know it was time to walk away and then when you think about expanding how do you know where you want to go and when is the right time you know, it's interesting. This is actually my first time publicly saying it, um, what I just told you about one of the locations. Um, the first day that I opened, uh, I had uh, people outside protesting because they didn't want me there. Mm. Um, and obviously they didn't look like us. Right. Um, and what I realized is I knew it from the beginning. I'm like, I don't know about this one. <laughs> I don't know about this location. It wasn't typical to the areas that I put Slutty Vegan in. Right. And I'm like hmm, this don't feel good in my spirit, but we're going to rock out anyway. Um, And and that was over a million dollar lesson that I had to learn. Um, But the reason why I'm okay saying it now, because as I evolve as an entrepreneur, the the biggest companies have had to close certain stores because Mm -hmm. they weren't operationally sound or they weren't working properly. It's part of the process. It's a part of the The process. The more you open, the more you open, the the more you realize. And then the more you evolve as a business owner, you got to be able to make smart decisions in your business. So if I was to, if I was keeping that location open, it was going to kill my AUV. And that was my average unit volume, right? Like it was going to kill the overall scope of the profile of the business. So 
I actually made a conscious, intelligent decision as an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. My ego could have gotten away and said, well, I don't want to close a slutty and vegan location. Too. And Emotionally, my emotion could have gotten like, away. You're not going to get me You're out of here. Exactly. But, but then I had to make a financial decision that was going to benefit the business in the long run. And now that I look back and I'm publicly saying this for the first time, I'm glad that I did it. And, and I hope this is a testament to entrepreneurs that, listen, you got what, what's this song say? You got to know when to hold them. Know, <laughs> know when, when to fold them. them. Know, know when, when to walk, walk away. away. Know, know when to run. run. Okay. <laughs> And that's just Shout truth. out to Kenny R. Yes, you really got to know. <laughs> and, and that is what makes a good entrepreneur because you know how to pivot, you know how to be a chameleon, and you know how to make really difficult decisions even when you don't want to make them. And then as Pre- far as expanding, how do you know, like, okay, this is, uh, and I learned this when I was taking courses at the small business uh, services, but they said location is going to be the number one reason that your business does or doesn't work like one of the top top reasons so how do you determine this is where we need to be or we should be and it's time to expand because some people might be like wow that's quick like Mm -hmm. six years 14 locations plus the bar vegans Mm -hmm. um so what i've realized in my brand is that slutty vegan works really well when they are in vegan food deserts so this evolved Mm -hmm. so before when i first started slutty vegan it was in food insecure areas right and let me tell you about evolution when you're an entrepreneur entrepreneur you should always be evolving so Mm -hmm. if you would have asked me this almost six years ago my answer probably would have been different Mm -hmm. but as I evolved in business I I realized a few things I realized that putting slutty vegan and vegan food insecure areas not just food insecure but vegan food insecure areas are a really good opportunity for me to be able to introduce that and that doesn't necessarily have to be a low income community it's perfect because it's you yeah right you being you me being me exactly what I also learned is that Slutty Vegan experience is like no other. Mm -hmm. Slutty Vegan is more of an experiential brand, right? So, like, Slutty Vegan needs to be in the Vegases and the Miamis Mm -hmm. and Californias and the New Yorks and very um, dense populated locations Mm -hmm. because people always have a really, really great first-time experience. So, we need to be in places where you see a lot more tourists. Um, And that's what I just learned over the years. I I probably wouldn't have said this almost six years ago. But as the business continues to grow and um, we level out and we diversify where we put the locations... I realized that with those findings, Slutty Vegan can continue to grow. We did a um, brand equity study um, with McKinsey. Um, I don't know if you ever mm-hmm. heard of McKinsey. Oh, yeah. yeah. We mm-hmm. work closely with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we did a brand equity study with McKinsey, and they really listed out the really great locations for Slutty Vegan, good locations, and bad locations. So right now, we follow in a blueprint. Okay. And that blueprint allows us to, to go in spaces that is more of a sure shot than playing Russian roulette. Leaker can, Street, baby. Yeah. yeah. Leaker Street. Leaker yes. Street <laughs> with Ms. Z's coffee in it. Tell us yes. about that. So, you know, it's funny because uh, we've been talking about it for a while. Like, <laughs> yes, yes we, we got to get every time we see each other. All right, we got to taste that coffee. We got to get that coffee in. And Pinky's and not then, a coffee drinker. And too. I don't drink. Yeah. I probably had two cups of coffee in my life. Me mm-hmm. too. Like yeah. my whole life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. my whole entire life. Yeah. So I don't drink coffee. I don't know anything about coffee. But obviously I did my research. Um, and I know Angie is a great businesswoman. Um, so when the opportunity came, um, I'm like, all right, we're about to beta test it in my Edgewood location. So that's what we're doing right now, beta testing it in Edgewood. And then now we're officially rolling it out in Bleecker Street. Yeah. Right? So, like, our beta uh, did well in Edgewood in Atlanta, and now we're officially rolling it out in um, Bleecker Street on the weekends, and then we're going to roll out every single day, and we will do it with uh, the coffee. Um, and I'm excited about it because this is just yet another opportunity to empower my sister, right? Listen, to empower another black woman. <laughs> I was. I was like, because to me, she first was of all, beaming the next. We had yeah. Shade um, <laughs> Muhammad from yes. Time, and they were just beaming. And right. I saw you like that day, yeah. and then the next day, it was like okay let's lock this in mm-hmm. but I also you know even want to talk about when it comes to partnering and and working with people because we just wanted to make sure to me I knew this was something I wanted to make mm-hmm. it happen mm-hmm. like from when you first had said it was a long time ago you were like one day we're gonna do breakfast we mm-hmm. got to talk about it and then I so saw I'm a you, woman of my word <laughs> yeah. I definitely was like oh my god come on pinky because I knew this was a big deal for me just because of the brand the person behind the brand mm-hmm. that always matters so much to me yep. and so to me it was just kind of like this is amazing for me to be able to do this partnership because of how great you are at marketing thank you so I know something like this is going to be a big boost for my business which is a pretty new business but it's a, it's it's an even exchange right because let me tell you what you do for my brand um as I 
I continue to grow, it shows that I'm also sharing the space with other black owned yeah. entrepreneurs, right? Black owned businesses. And that's a big deal as you grow in business. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not waiting until I get all the way to the top and just like be in solidarity with other companies that are, are rising up to the occasion. No, I'm doing it now. So as I lift, I climb, right? And obviously you you ain't need my push. Like you are a media maven, right? But for us to be able to collaborate and work together is just another example of what more entrepreneurs should do in their industries. And I'm trying to make sure I super serve. Like if I could be there, yes. I'm there. Yes. there. And I, I already go to the location. And even, and I'll be honest, even if you would have been like, this isn't going to work, I still would be going to Slutty Vegan. Yes. And you still be sitting that. right here. Like it isn't even just about that. It just um, helps. Me. Yes, like, but I will say uh, Angela every- is a wonderful, phenomenal partner. I could tell you, I um, came as a guest on her show about eight years ago, oh, wow. and somehow well, the Wealth Wednesdays brand was born. Just I, I always tell people, Angela thinks it's like bad luck to not be good to people, yeah, and not to Damn. help people. No, She's honestly, a wonderful when we started Wealth Wednesday, mm. we started this as something that I was like, let's give some free yeah. financial, mm-hmm. you know, support to our community and advice, and we started it at my juice bar. When's your birthday? January third. Do you know what's so funny what she just said? So, and I know this is a little off topic, but that literally is my mindset. I feel like God is always testing you um, when you come and are encountered with other people, right? Good, bad, or indifferent. And I feel like God gives you the test. Like, all right, are you going to be good to this person? Are you going to do right by this person? Are you going to be fair to this person? And if you aren't good to this person, I feel like that's when the good karma does not come to you. I agree. So, like, that's my philosophy. That's, that's what literally it Literally like in from- everything that I do. Everything that I, I do. I know. You do things, and that's why I really like aligning with, with Pinky also. Just because even doing American Sesh, like, I, you know, obviously I follow mm-hmm. you and I watch everything that you have going on. But the fact that she's like... I just want to come together and come up with mm-hmm. ideas and I want other people to become entrepreneurs and I want yeah. everybody to have an LLC mm-hmm. and I want to make sure I'm going to help this person. You guys can shout on me mm-hmm. and now we're going to give some money for your business to help you and I'm going to shout, shout out your business. Yeah. I've seen people who have clothing lines who just by you, you went on your tour, your book mm-hmm. tour and you were like, I'm going to wear all these black owned brands. Yeah. And that helped people's businesses. I wear black owned brands all of the time. Yeah. So much. <laughs> yeah. You yep. know, but that something like that can help somebody's business go mm-hmm. from like, you know, kind of flat to now it's spiking up and now it helps them get to the next level. Mm-hmm. Now they have something to say when they're trying to do more collaborations mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Yeah. And it means so much to people that you're valuing ideas yeah. mm-hmm. in that time. Yeah. And it's just the world. It, it, it feels so good. And I just I feel like in turn, I always continue to get blessed. And, and and God is so good to me. Um, and, and, and I believe just naturally, mm-hmm. innately, it's because uh, it, it's important for me to be good to other people. You know, and a lot of times, like, I look at it like, some things I can't control, you know. People will be, take advantage, could, right? Yeah, they, and they mm-hmm. do, and they will. And I yes. think it's hard to sometimes say, I get taken advantage of, I have to stop doing good things, mm-hmm. but... I think it's even harder to be like, I have to continue to do good things. Yeah. And that's important to me just yeah. because people will tell me, Angela, you're too nice. Mm-hmm. Like, I get that. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. But I'm not going to change who I am because everybody's not like that. Mm-hmm. I learn my lessons mm-hmm. from certain people, but that doesn't mean the next person yeah. should Don't be Don't let anybody but knock you off But it also does game. teach you not to do too much yes. sometimes. You yes. know what I mean? Because like, I, cause I also levels. had to create boundaries yes, because there right. are people that will abuse your kindness mm-hmm. um, and you have to understand how to compartmentalize people genuinely needing you and you supporting them from people that are just naturally taking advantage of you and being a vulture because those people do exist and it's not fair to us because we are givers and helpers and builders so you just really have to protect your energy and just use that spirit of discernment to identify like what is what I'm not going to let anything anybody does stop me from being a nice person yeah. mm-hmm. and because you can see through to somebody's essence you can see through mm-hmm. to all of their stuff and always forgive but that does not mean you don't set boundaries yeah absolutely you have to set those you boundaries. have to set them. And I would be right at this bar vegan. I, first of all, I just also want to say we don't talk about bar vegan enough <laughs> and how amazing that restaurant. Thank you. Is. Do you know bar vegan was really just I was sitting on my blue couch. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, okay, and I came up with bar vegan and I'm like, oh, bar vegan. I want to create a restaurant <laughs> that's vegan. They got a bar and call it bar vegan. And I had no idea that I was creating another multi million dollar brand. Mm-hmm. And it just happened like that. That's how I know. I'm like, you know what? This is such a blessing to be able to be the anchor of all of these things. Barfi can be popping. And there is such a <laughs> difference bet. between people who have an idea 
and then just be like, I oh, forget, it. I'm not gonna do it. And people who have an idea and then say, well, let me figure out how can I make this happen. Yeah, you yeah, know. And that absolutely. I think is gonna be the difference between people becoming successful and and creating mm-hmm. wealth for the future generations and people who are just like, I could have did that, I should have did that. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I want to give some advice to all the entrepreneurs listening to this because obviously, I'll be honest, it's easy for me to come up with an idea and execute, right? I have the means to do so. But what I had to do to get to this position is I had to get super laser focused on Slutty Vegan when I first created my company, right? Like tunnel vision. I'm not thinking about nothing else. I'm not doing nothing else. I'm making sacrifices. I ain't going out. I'm not partying. Like I'm mm-hmm. making the main thing the main thing. And when the main thing started to grow and scale and become a household name and, and a, a money revenue generating machine, then I started to focus on other things. Like, okay, now I could use this money to continue to create more ideas, but you have to make that thing that you have focus on it. A lot of times people come to me and like, well, I got these three ideas. I want to do this and I want to do I'm like, no. <laughs> focus on the first thing first and make that thing so great. And as that thing becomes great, that becomes your umbrella. Just like a trust. It becomes right. your umbrella. That jumps out at you when you were like researching and looking at your story. It's like she stayed in her lane. Yeah, stay she in that really lane. Stayed in and, her lane. And then when you realize what that lane is and manifest it and, and, and it becomes successful, then all of your other mm-hmm. great ideas, you'll be able to focus on them and, and use the resources from the first thing and to create funnels of other income mm-hmm. with those other ideas. You know, Pinky, being that you are very... Um, laser focus and you know what it is that you want when you raised money 25 million dollars mm-hmm. for your business what was that like for you as far as having to balance like did you have to give up some ideas some control you have to now compromise certain things what was that like for you you want to know the truth yes you the money person so i'm sure that you probably heard this before i cried when i got that money oh god yes i can it was probably the most beautiful validating cry it it wasn't it was beautiful yes scary it was scary Ter- terrifying that comes with it for for a lot of reasons right and i think that it's specifically in our communities just based on my experience like i used to be like it's me it's mine i created this i don't want to share it i don't want to give it up no 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 like i work for hard for this yeah like that's how i used to be and there was two sides of the coin. A part of me was like, okay, this money will give me the resources to be able to grow the company in a major way. Mm -hmm. But then on the flip side, I've always had this complex. Like, I don't like people telling me what to do. (laughs) I just don't. I'm being honest, right? (laughs) So, you know, when you get money from an investor... Not it's not that people tell you what to do. Now you have a board. Responsibility. Yeah, you have a board, and you have to have board meetings, and there has to be a board vote. And although I'm the chair of my board, right, you still have to make, answer to them. You you still have to answer to the board. So it's not mm-hmm. a specific person, but you got to vote. So now you got to have real systems. Before it used to be like <laughs> I'm, and and it's still like this for the most, unless it's like a super decision. Like if I decide to close my business, like I have to get board approval to do that, right? Because now I'm a corporation. I'm no longer just a regular entity right but that's hard sometimes because back in the day it used to be just like all right pinky like i want to do this and i do it right now if it's a really really big decision right and i've had to adjust and navigate around that Mm -hmm. because like having a team of partners um in my mind i thought that it wasn't easy but i have some really good partners which is a blessing and those partners not only have the resources i can call them in the middle of the night they don't get on my nerves because we're in a professional relationship Mm -hmm. right they wanted Um, to succeed as much as you they wanted to succeed as much as i do so shout out to uh richie lou dennis and and the new voices family um and ehi danny Meyer, who created shake shack is one of my investors as Mm -hmm. well um and I, I just have the, the, the best set of people helping me to grow. So that cry was a scary cry, but it was also very beautiful because as a black woman to raise that kind of money to create a hundred million dollar brand, you really don't see it a lot. So I get to be the example for other black women that it is possible and you could do it too. You don't see it at all. I mean, yeah. three tenths, what, seven tenths of venture capital money goes to black women. Last year, venture capital investing overall, <coughs> excuse me was down about 40% and then black women down 80%. Mm-hmm. Talk to us about access to capital. It's just you know, getting I, harder and harder and harder. You know, it's interesting because I have a difference of opinion and only because I'm in the space. Like mm-hmm. I'm and, and and it might be biased because I'm in the space, but I'm going to tell you what I think. And again, this ain't law cuz I'm not like <laughs> I'm not in your world, right? Um, but what I realize is 
it actually seems like, well, up until recently when the economy started to shift, I feel like the easiest it's been was during COVID. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? When COVID happened, yeah, like, every, people was, I like, felt like a stripper. Money? Yes. <laughs> it changed <laughs> like, so much last year because of all the affirmative action stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, w- there was a point, and I can remember from 2020 to 2022, it was so easy to get money. We were oversubscribed. Like mm-hmm. they, they opportunities. I'm talking about commercials, opportunities, oh, yeah, engagement. They, throwing money, Every, at, they were throwing money. You right. know why? Because in lieu of everything that happened with George Floyd, God rest his soul. I believe that big companies felt like they had a responsibility to support mm-hmm. smaller organizations, right? Black owned businesses, specifically minority owned businesses. So it was so much easier. All you had to do was have a right business, right? That a lot of people were talking about mm-hmm. making some revenue and people will be paying attention to you. So when we talk about it, it was difficult. Yes. A long time ago um, for black women to get money. I felt like those two years, like that period made it a lot easier now it's, it's totally back. totally now <laughs> it's sliding back now right? the rug's not sliding anywhere the rug is pulled out it's the, gone. the rug is gone right the people are being sued for giving money to blacks and yeah. by giving opportunities and, and, and shout out to, to Ari and Simone she's handling that beautifully the with the fearless fund and she's actually one of my investors mm-hmm. um so like I, I've really been um a, a big supporter in her movement um before, during, and after, right now. You know what I mean? And, and and the fact that we even have to have those conversations with what she's dealing with just tells us that the time is like, it changed, but it ain't changed that much. Yeah. <laughs> you understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I say all that um, to say that the opportunity to get money, um, the, the pickings are slim, but as long as you are creative with it, it can still be possible. And how can it be possible is having a super laser focus on your business and building something that is so irresistible. It don't, you could be green, mm-hmm. right? If you build something so irresistible, people cannot deny it. Um, and, and I think that that will start to solve the problem. And then also, when, I mean, this is a whole nother conversation. When we look at the government where we are right now, like a lot has changed. Um, especially as it relates to business owners and and how we grow our businesses and the kickbacks that we get and the benefits that we get in business. It it seems like it's getting harder and harder. Um, So I I pray that I can be an example with providing more opportunities by way of American Session, all the other things that I'm doing to help provide a space for black women, black men, minorities, um, woman-owned businesses to be able to have the space to, to be able to get money to grow their companies. Ooh. Wealth Wednesdays is <laughs> sad. Yeah, you know, we are you giving can come it. up here every weekend. Drop some, I know some gems for us, but like you said, I've been following your journey from the beginning, and so yeah. it is such a pleasure for me to be able to say you can get coffee up list people at Slutty Vegan yes, for can. breakfast now. Yes. And, and breakfast is a new thing for you guys, also. I mean, you just yeah. started serving breakfast this month in March. We did very new. We mm-hmm. get we're getting a lot What's of good feedback. Like? What I are, love what are mornings you did. like. My morning. <laughs> Things are good. People are people are just learning about it. We yeah. actually did a rollout with no marketing. Yeah, like we like we just gonna open it first. <laughs> yeah, um, let it go, see how it goes. Yeah. So, you know. So this is the first real marketing that I've done outside of like posting on social about breakfast. Mm-hmm. So now we're about to do like a full on marketing rollout. So I'm excited to to be able to officially launch it here. Um, and I know that breakfast is gonna be great. I know, and they have homemade biscuits from scratch. So homemade gonna have biscuits. biscuits and Angela's coffee. Yeah, biscuits so and Angela's. Coffee. And pretty soon next time, Pinky is gonna be a coffee drinker. I cannot wait to see. No, it, she baby. will not. <laughs> <laughs> should look, you know. Let her convert us. No, yeah, you no never know. You never that. know. But anyway, honestly, Pinky, thank you so much. I cannot, you know, like I said, no matter what, I always support you. But thank I'm just you. really excited about our partnership and working with you as a human being and as a person is an honor for me. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate and you. Shout out to both of you for what you're doing together, the mm-hmm. example that you're being. In. And me and you too, Stacey. We yeah, do everything we'll we'll together. Yes. I was just about to say this is you are now part of the Wealth Wednesdays family <laughs> and we have plans for you. Yes. And she will be in our entrepreneurs group which is free to all of you just sign up for Wealth Wednesdays for entrepreneurs and you have if you guys can feel the energy in this room right now these three black women are going to do a lot yes all right thank Thank you you. thank you